Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite applications. This is called Figma. Now, we're going to be looking at this software for the purposes of creating wireframes and being able to export our assets from those wireframes. So to begin, you'll see that I have a document already open, and we'll readdress that in just a second. I first want to begin by creating a frame to be uh, start to draw on. So I'm going to go to the frame tool over on the left-hand side. I'm going to choose the size that I want, and I'm generally going to choose the 1440 by 1080 size. And the reason why is because I want a nice full desktop size for what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to drag that bottom down just to make it a little bit longer. Maybe it doesn't have to be quite as long as the other ones. And then I can zoom in just by holding down the um, control key and the mouse wheel and zoom right in. One of the things I love about Figma is that it works much like a desktop application and, and it's free. So it's a really, really great way to learn. Now when I've gotten up close, um, I still want to be on this particular um, desktop. It's a good idea for you to go ahead and double click on the name and call it what it is. If this is the home page of your project, then call it that. Now the next thing that I want to do is add some layout grids to this. So over on the right hand side, you want to click on the plus and you'll see here I've got a grid which is 10 points. I might actually keep that on and I'm going to add another one as well and this particular grid if I click on the box here on the left is going to be a column grid and I'm going to tell it to be centered and I'm going to change it to 12 columns with a width of 60 for each column. Now what this does is this gives me um, a nice fairly wide um, center you know column of 12 columns I guess in the middle which is much like you see with bootstrap and foundation and whatever else any graphics that I design here that um, go across the full width of 1440 pixels will indeed be a full screen graphic anything that goes across the 12 columns will be what's called a contained graphic and or a contained section possibly now, if you want to adjust your colors, you can definitely adjust them just to make things a little bit better for your needs, if that's what you like. I might actually keep the defaults. However, with my um, with this right here, I might actually take this down just a little bit more, just to make that a little bit more subtle. But as you can see, if I zoom up, you'll see the pixel grid is really nice to have in conjunction with the column grid, just because it gives it shows you exactly where you're snapping with those pixels. Now, in order to use this grid, the next thing that we need to start to do is add elements. So I'm going to start by creating a rectangular element that goes across this. Um, and I'm going to go all the way across because I'm kind of doing a the design of a uh, banner or hero image. And you'll see over on the right, I get to see the width and the height ratios. I actually got pretty good at 630. But you can always adjust this by maybe changing it to an actual number if you want, which is really, really quite nice. Now, once you have that basic um, element, you might want to go ahead and give it a name. So I'm going to call this thing my hero image. So I know that's going to be a hero image that's used. The next thing that I'm going to need is some text. So I'll, I'll go ahead and design some text real quick, start to type in it just going to be putting uh, some text, although uh, maybe I should say the heading here. And this heading is going to be aligned to the right hand side. I'm going to select that text just so I can make it a little bit bigger. And I can even change the font so it's a little bit more bold. So obviously we can adjust our text and we can create multiple text elements as well. The other one that I want to show you though is creating a button. If we go to the rectangle tool and we design a rectangle that goes across here, then we can choose what color we want to make that um, rectangle. And then if we want to put text on top of it, unfortunately, we have to design an exterior piece of text. And I'll just do a quick um, text here, button title. I know it's not the right size, but I'll adjust that in just a second by changing the font size. And then I'm going to move it so it's down on top of that element here and you can see we can kind of stretch it to fit the entire box. What's nice about this is that if you tell it to be centered horizontally and centered vertically it'll go right in the center of your box. Then you can change 
the color and you can change the size so it's appropriate to fitting that box and if you need a different size like 32 maybe just type it right in now if you look over on your left hand side you'll see that you have both the button rectangle title and the rectangle that are two separate elements and what you want to do is group these with control G you might be also able to right click and choose group selection then we'll call this my CTA button and we've got a lot better organization the last thing that we want to be able to do with any of our sections is organize these things by making this entire section a group and this is really important that you have the the size that you need and that before you make it a group so now that I have all of that selected you'll see they're all selected over here you can right click and choose group or just do control G and now I can call this my hero now remember when you design your um, different sections like the ones I have here I'm designing with just with grayscale at first just to kinda get the basic layout but you always want to design from the top down so here's my hero section and my hero section right now is actually on the bottom and then we have our info boxes next we want to reverse that order so we design from the top down and then inside of a section we want to design from the left to the right and if you notice I have my first info box my second info box and my third info box and they're out of or order so I'm gonna put those in the right order and obviously we might go ahead and give those different names um, if we were trying to get them organized just the right way now you'll notice that these are diamonds and that's the next thing that's really 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 important let me come back to the first one that I was designing I'm gonna design um, a new section and this new section is gonna be the next one down and I'll say that it will be let's only make it like oh 500 pixels tall there we go and I'm gonna change the fill with this so it's really 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 light because I know that I'm not really gonna have a background in that particular section I just wanted to kind of show it being there now in this section it's going to have another image and that image is gonna go straight across and then it's just gonna have a little blurb of text underneath that image this blurb of text under the image and if we want to, of course to scale that text we can that's really small but I'm not gonna worry about that right now it'd be like kind of like if I had a caption to this image there we go so now what I've got is I've got an image and this is going to be an image later so might even want to make it black if, if you want to indicate it's an image and I've got this blurb of text and I know I'm gonna make a copy of it over to the side but before I do that what I want you to do is actually take this off to the side so it's not on the pasteboard and I want you to convert this into a component by turning this into a component and of course giving that component a name image with blurb let me spell image right now when you use this by dragging it back over to the left and using the alt key now what you're doing is you are designing a version or you're using that component and what's great about it is that if we make any changes to the component afterwards we'll get the changes in this element so here's what I've decided I've decided this blurb is not the right um, font and not the right size so I'm gonna go back into my component I'm gonna change this to a bold item and I'm gonna change the font to 24 points and now you'll see everywhere that component is used it changes as well that's really awesome of course we would then want to make sure that these two are organized correctly um, about which ones on top which ones on the bottom and then we would want to select all of those different elements and make them a new um, group and then go ahead and give this group a name this is going to be um, features I don't know why I just came up with that and we want that to be the next section down just be careful about putting it inside the other section we can get it back out I usually find it's best to close the section ah, 
I'm going to take the hero and drag it above features. There we go. Now that worked. So now on our home page we have the hero first, then we have our feature second. Now the next thing that I want to do is go back into this element here and instead of filling it with a um, just a black rectangle, I'm going to fill it with an image. So if I go back over to my fill settings, once I've selected that rectangle, let's go over to the image and then choose an image to fill it with. Now I've got a whole bunch of images already, so let me go actually to my downloads and I'm going to use one of these that I've already downloaded just for fun. It will upload that image in just a moment. It will show me how that image looks there. Now this particular image has a um, has no background, so that's why it looks the way it is, like it's see-through. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, let's just say that that's the perfect image that I wanted to use, and it's the perfect size. Um, let's go to the next one and add something into there. So I find an image. I upload my next image. Give it time to upload. And you'll see that one also had transparency because I was playing with some images. Now, now that I've got these two images here, I'm ready to go to the next step, which is exporting the different elements that I want for this page. Obviously, I should have thought about it, so let me add um, a hero image as well. I'll see if I can find a better image to load. Uh, I think the image of people sounds great. Even though it's a terrible image, I'm going to use it. Now, if I wanted to play with this, I could change the saturation of that image. I could play with the color temperature of that image. I could do the tint of that image. There's a lot of fun things you can do with um, Figma to your images. And you can also see that you might have some stuff at the bottom that you're, that you're not seeing. So I really like the ability to do just some light image editing within Figma. Anyway, this is going to be my hero image. And this is going to be feature image one and feature image two. So we want to go to those elements, and what I want you to do is make sure that this image name um, has no um, spaces in it, and you have a dash instead of a space. Then for the next one, I'm going to call this feature image one, even though that's a terrible name. And the next one, that's going to be feature image two with no spaces in the names. Now that I have this um, object there selected, now I can go to my export and I can actually export the images that I have here. And if you use 1x, of course, it will um, export it at the current size. You can also change the format so I could even do a JPEG instead. So let's just see what happens if I do a 3x JPEG. That means it will be three times the size of this image which means it'll be a pretty high quality image that gets exported. The benefit of this, I'll do this with the same with the other one, the benefit of this is that when I take it back into WordPress or something, then it can generate these small image sizes based upon the settings I have in WordPress. Now for your large full screen images, 1440 pixels is really okay. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that size and I'm gonna call this my hero image and it's going to be a JPEG and it will be just at 1x. Now that I'm ready to export my graphics, you'll see if I don't do anything and I just go up to the top, all I have is the one graphic. We need to go back to the home page itself so we have the entire page selected for it to be go able to go in and see all the different images that are inside there. And it even tells me what's going to happen. I'm going to get a 1x JPEG at this size, a 3x JPEG at that size, and a 3x JPEG at that size. Now I'm ready to export. Save this as my zip file. And if I go and unzip that, here's the images that have been exported. And there you can see the um, ones that I have, which are JPEGs, which means it got rid of the background. Um, and here's the really, really bad quality image that I used as my hero. So this is a very quick introduction to how to use um, Figma, how to use components, how to use, of course, the basic drawing things. Some of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory. Where things get really fun is when you start using components and you start nesting components.
And then also another thing I really want you to look into is the use of constraints in design. And the more that you look into those, I promise you will find some really nice hidden features of Figma. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.